Hello and welcome to Victory Chat with Jackie McKeever. I'm your host, Jackie McKeever, and this is Victory Chat where your victory starts here. And on my, on my podcast, we talk about things that will help you take your life and your business back. So on this podcast, um, you will hear things about self-development. You'll hear things about your money and things about your business. So for season two, we're doing a series called Behind the Author's Pen, where we interview um, different storytellers and, and authors who have written stories that change our lives. And y'all know I love a good story. <laughs> anyway, so today I have Mike James. Um, he has an audio series called The Secrets, The Secret Life of the Seek, The Secrets of a Life Coach. He's also a YouTuber. Welcome, Mike. How are you doing? I'm well. Thank you so much. Happy Thursday or whatever day people are tuning in. Happy that day. <laughs> so Mike has agreed to get in the hot seat. I'm going to ask him 10 questions and we're going to get all in his business. Okay. Cause that's <laughs> what we do on. <laughs> that's what we do. Okay. So are you ready, Mike? I'm ready. Yeah. It sounds a little uh, terrifying, but let's get in my business. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first question is, why did you start this audio series? Man, Jackie, I, uh, it's amazing to me as a life coach, which is something I've been doing for about 11 years, how people will look at the outside of their life and assume that that's an obstacle for them or those are things that are, that are in the way. But over the years and doing a lot of internal work myself, um, it's always us standing in our own way. And that sounds pretty cliche and we could all uh, agree with that to some level, but um, in ways like, you know, there's so many people out there that just pray and pray and pray for things to change yet. They keep doing the same things over and over again, mm -hmm. they keep hanging out with the same people. They keep the same distractions in front of them, whether it's, you know, um, I don't have enough time, whether it's, you know, I'm stuck in this type of relationship. Um, I don't have enough money. I, you know, I, I have obligations that I have to do. Um, and people were taught to say yes all the time when uh, a magical word is no. And the things can fall into place when you start putting up, I don't want to say boundaries, but just things that you need in telling people. So I love to create stories and they're really cinematic. They're almost like mini ear movies for your soul that um, you get to hear a character and a journey they're going down and you get to learn something in the end. So with fresh choices that'll be available to you when you listen in and, and um, you don't have to take them, but it'll get your mind out of your head and into the bigger picture of life um, with fresh options and choices. So it's, and it's a lot of fun. I love, they're really cinematic with music and sound effects to give the listener, again, a great experience um, versus just, there's a lot of books out there, um, a lot of podcasts and, uh, you know, audiobooks too, that just pile information at us versus just, here's a, here's a story about someone who's going through life. Um, the first story in the first album is someone told they have one year to live and the process mm. that they go through um, because they were busy and they were in control of their life. Like we're all taught control and what happens with that. And that's just one example of one of the stories. Exciting. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the next question, and um, you're, you're absolutely right. We are the the biggest competition in, in our life. And we do have to learn to get out of our own way. Stop. I always say, stop stepping on your own foot. Um, yep. So the next question is how long have you been writing? Uh, whew, my whole life for sure. I, I literally have journals from second grade all the way up. Wow. To, yeah. All the way up till about I would say 10 years ago and why I stopped is I, I feel like instead of just capturing my life, I started really doing internal work to live it. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as these stories, you know, I went to school for screenwriting originally, um, but I didn't want to move to California and only one in a million uh, scripts actually make it to the big screen. Mm -hmm. Not why I stopped it, but I just 
didn't have the heart for that anymore. Um, but I've been writing these sets of stories since 2012 and they just keep coming in and eventually I'll have seven or eight albums worth. And right now I'm working on album four, which is really, really exciting. So, um, yeah, been writing my whole life, but really turning it into my craft and my profession, uh, since 2012, which is weird. I can't believe it's, that's nine years ago. It's 2021, right? I don't know what's happening since Look, I, I, I had to think about it. Is it 21? Yes, it is. I know. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> Crazy. Um, when you first started or first started publishing, um, were there any delays in producing the first work, making it available to the public? Um, not particularly. There was delays probably with albums two and three, because my albums are on iTunes and Amazon and you can find them, you know, just go to mikejamesnow.com and you can listen to sample stories and, and get the albums off iTunes or Amazon by clicking on the buttons. But over time with streaming coming in, you know, Spotify, Pandora, things like that, that, um, you know, artists don't make a lot of money off of streaming. I think it's, I think they get like $1 or $10, one of those two for every 10,000 listens. And let's be honest, if we, you know, Beyonce, we might listen to that song over and over again. So she might get a lot of plays, but my stories people will return to, but it's not like, man, I'm going to listen to that six times in a row because it gives me this feeling, you know, you learn something and you, you'll return to it when you need it. But so those streaming services didn't work for me. So some of the delays were pulling them off those streaming services Mm. and just being available for purchase on iTunes and Amazon, much like you would, you know, in the old school days, go and buy a movie for yourself. So you always have it. You might watch it once a year or something like that. Kind of like I do with American Beauty or Forrest Gump or something like that. But, um, but yeah, no delays at the beginning. And then as platforms change, uh, I have to either roll with it or find a way to change through it. So yeah, it's been interesting. I love that question. Though. Nobody's ever asked me that before. Mm-hmm. Um, who were these uh, stories created for? Mm. So I would say they're created for people that feel like they're carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. Mm. So the people that put a lot of stuff on themselves to be in charge and be in control. So I always tell people that they're, they're really transformational for the busy, uh, for people who feel kind of restless, knowing that there's something more out there for them, just other than the day-to-day stuff that they're doing. Um, and they're also for people who feel stuck like just kind of stuck in their circumstances, stuck in their relationships, um, even feeling stuck in your own head there. These stories help you get out of that um, again with the fresh choices and options. And, um, and yeah. And for anybody who's really interested in, you know, self-help and self-improvement um, I did some uh, market research one time. And uh, one of the guys told me, he's like, this is fun self-help. And that stuck with me. So it's, it's not, again, more information. It's actually enjoyable self-help. You get to learn something uh, through characters. And um, yeah, a little bit different than just cramming information to someone's head. And, and for the busy people, like I'm not pretending like you need to sit down and listen to these stories. You're busy. Like, how do you have time to do that? But they're perfect for, you know, driving in the car, mowing the lawn, cleaning the house. Um, interestingly, some people listen to it while they're exercising. Um, I wow. can't. Yeah, I can't exercise and try to pay attention to a story. When I'm exercising, I'm, I'm going hard, Jackie. I don't have time for my own story. So, what <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, will there be, you, I know you said you already answered this question, but um, will there be other stories in um, different genres for you? I just, yeah, great question. I know for sure there's other stories. Um, right now, working on album four, uh, which each album takes about a year and a half, two years to make with the pandemic. You know, God bless all the people that lost people and had a hard time with that. Mm-hmm. For me, I had so much time that I was able to jam through my third album in a year and a half, which was really quick. Um, but I think in the series, there'll be a, seven or eight albums for sure that'll all, all the characters tie together. Um, you can listen to one story and then check out a story three albums later and you're not losing anything. There's no chronological. Mm. They all stand alone, but you'll start to hear little moments from a small character from album one, their full story on album five and stuff like that. So yeah, it's a, it is definitely a series, but nothing that um, 
you have to listen to from start to finish. You can jump in anywhere and, and learn and feel something for yourself. But yeah, there's a lot more coming. And um, I, I get tired when I think of, oh my God, three or four more albums. But uh, <laughs> it's such a joy to put them together. I just can't think of the, how long it takes and how expensive it is. But um, well worth it if I know people are getting a sense of peace and calm and clarity. That's what the stories are providing. So I know I'm doing my, my work. Okay. Um, what else would you like the reader, the listeners, because it's the audio series, the listeners to get from listening to your stories? Yeah. Do you, do we have time for me to tell a quick story? Not one from the albums? Um, sure. Okay. Sure, go ahead. I'm going to make this quick, Jackie. So um, let's say we were to go into the jungle and capture a monkey or a lion. And we were to take it to, and we put it in a cage. And let's say that it's brought to the zoo. Okay. Let's say that cage door after the monkey was in there or the lion was in there for, you know, six months to a year. And that cage door is left open without anybody around. What do you think that animal does with the cage door left open? Escape. One would think that. But it's been oh because they've been in the cage forever they've gotten conditioned to that area yeah and again okay. not a test I'm not trying to test you by any means <laughs> don't <laughs> test me don't test me <laughs> right right here's, here's what actually happens and it's been proven that they will watch these animals and they'll they'll either come out of the cage and stay very close to it or not mm. come out at all and here's why I write these stories um, and what I want people to know about just being a human is that whatever we're taught in society, whatever we're taught in our classmates as kids, by our parents, all the rules that we're supposed to follow, that um, that's our cage. But the beauty, the beautiful thing is that um, we are the monkey or lion. We are the actual cage and we are the key to get out of it if we want. Mm. And I think that's super important because if we're the key, we have the key to our own freedom. And I think that's what most of us are really, really working for why do we want to be rich so we can be free we don't have to be tied to a a clock a boss something like that you know like i think the majority of things if we're honest tie back to freedom we want as much freedom as possible in a world that tries to hammer us with like buy this do this you can only be happy if you if you purchase this you know um but yeah we're we are the animal we are the cage and we are the key that's a that was a great story. I enjoyed that. Thank and you. It's, it's funny because I had a similar conversation with somebody else earlier today um, about how we uh, get conditioned. So that was funny hmm. that I hear I'm hearing it again. It's a sign for you. Yeah, you are you the key? What's going on? <laughs> uh, well, um, just uh, since we tell stories, so. Um, I, we were just doing our everyday routine, pondering in the bathroom. I don't know why so many stories happen in front of the mirror. But anyway, <laughs> so um, I struck a conversation because I was just thinking about um, the scientists that said about the things that we learned. Our, our way of thinking is developed as a child. And yeah. a lot of times uh, our view, regardless of the stimuli, stimuli lie, uh, we're, well, introduced because two people can be introduced to the same stimuli, but have the same different thoughts about that stimuli, right? Uh, and so yeah. our environment and the people around our stimuli, stimuli um, and we create these thoughts and even though they are developed as a child we carry them on as an adult and it's up to us to decide to uh out we were talking about how um for instance if you grow if you grew up and you got the idea that the only way you'll have this that this that if you do it by yourself you don't have any help um, because you feel like you feel and think that's the only way for you to get anything, but versus the person who has, uh, the belief that in order for them to have somebody, something, 
they have to connect uh, to some, somebody else has to provide it for them. Mm. Um, and not that those two people um, are wrong because there's a there's power in connection right. and there's also power within ourselves. And so that's basically what we're talking about, how you have to um, change your mindset to make the c- connection between um, connecting with other people and you doing things yourself. So anyway, so it's it's the same story, but told a different way. That's why I said it's funny how we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so the next question is, what I'm going to say, instead of just books, what stories uh, by auth- or authors inspire you? Yeah, I love this question. Um, I'm going to go back to basics. Did you ever read Charlotte's Web? I remember the story, yes. Yeah, that spider is weaving in weird, you know, words about that pig so the pig wouldn't get slaughtered. I kind of feel mm-hmm. like that was one of my uh, favorite books as a kid. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm that spider as a life coach, like you are amazing, even if you don't think so, but Mm -hmm. we're going to, I'm not going to help you learn anything. What we're going to do is take off and have you unlearn the things that don't work for you. And there you are. And um, Mm. I kind of feel like that spider. I don't actually, I'm terrified of spiders to be honest with you. (laughs) So um, I don't want to be one and I don't want them near me. Um, But I kind of feel like that really, really resonates with me. And then, um, and honestly, you know, that's, that's a book that, you know, I don't sit there and read Charlotte's Web as an adult all the time. And Why not? <laughs> I, could, I could, I just have it in a while. And, um, but thank you for reminding me, maybe it'll be next on the list. Um, but then I, I love reading. Um, I don't want to, I'm not going to say any type of author, but I love reading personal memoirs of people mm-hmm. who have gone through something. Um, you know, I just read a memoir of someone whose brother had schizophrenia and killed their mother. Mm. And fascinating but I also read books of like someone who took a year off and went and and hung out in a small cabin by themselves without any distractions no electronics no communication with other people like I love the journeys that people are going down because you know in society we're taught to stay on certain paths and I find it fascinating when your path gets altered by something or you decide to find your own so personal memoirs and real life stories are really what I what I love I do too. I love it when people, that's one of the reasons why I love books so much. Not that I don't listen to fantasy, but I love things that uh, I like to say motivate instead of just inspire because motivate has move. Um, I love books or, I mean, any kind of book or any kind of story that causes a person to move, move their mindset, move the limits. move from one area to another despite the circumstances yeah yeah Um, absolutely and I also love to laugh so if I find something that'll do one or the other that's what I gravitate to you might Um, like a book called it's okay to laugh and cry too it's kind of hmm. a memoir about someone who lost their father husband and a baby in one year and it's actually funny but you know It's obviously she went through a lot, so it's a little bit heartbreaking too, but you might appreciate that. I'm going to put that down. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to look that up. Okay. Um, So listeners, y'all might be hearing a review on that book later. (laughs) (laughs) I do book reviews. Um, So the next question, do you have any advice you would give uh, another storyteller or author? Um, I would. Yeah. That's a great question. The advice I would give is to, um, if you, so anybody who creates art, Mm. we are basically creating art of something that we wanted for ourselves, right? So put yourself in each character that you develop, how they think, where they go, um, what they do on a regular basis, what keeps them stuck. And that'll make a more rich experience for you telling a story because you know that character inside and out. And you can, and other people will identify, you'll find the right listeners or readers or whatever it is, because they're the ones that identify with what you have to say because of who you are and what you put into the characters. So that's probably the advice I would give. 
That is so true. That's good advice because all the the popular authors or whether they be screen uh, play writers or just regular books, they always put a character that reminds them of themselves in it. And that's what, yeah. um, because that's what makes the their writing so well. Absolutely. Because you know, uh, Stan Lee actually put himself in, in his movies. So if he could do it, everybody can do it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yep, absolutely. So, so I'm going to ask you a random question. Generally, sure. generally, I don't ask authors this, but because right. I love your answers, I know you can answer this question. So um, if you were to talk to yourself when you first began writing these stories, um, and I don't remember how many years it's been since you first started these, uh, starting writing uh, these auto se series or whatever. What yep. advice would you give yourself? I love that question because it's so clear to me. The advice I would give is slow down. Literally slow down because if the rest of the world is moving fast and we're seeing how that's turning out and people myself included for a long time, aren't taking the time to really like trust something outside of yourself. Instead of like, I had shiny object and shiny people syndrome. I want to be with these people over here. I want to, I had so many ideas and I wanted to do things versus just taking, even if it's for 20 minutes a day, just laying on the couch and staring at the ceiling or doing breath work or meditation that, that what that does is calm your head so that new ideas can come in. And then your heart will know which ones to grab onto versus there's so much advice out there and everybody's always telling you the next step to, to go, um, even if they're not creating the same things that you are, which is funny. <laughs> and, and even if you don't ask for the advice, um, but of course, well-meaning, but slowing down really speeds things up. And I, I really believe that stopping is the new moving forward during this very, very busy time of life. That's good. That's good. I always tell, I have to remind myself because um, I see myself as a busybody sometimes. Sure. Um, stop and smell the flowers sometimes. It's okay that you just sit where you are for a minute. I, I love that advice or just relax. Yeah. Re oh my gosh. Relaxing is so underrated because mm -hmm. if you get a calm, number one, if you're moving so fast, you can't really see what's in front of you or you can't get the full picture. If we're talking so much, we can't hear what's next for us. That's slowing. And if I always turn things back to nature, not, not spiders, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there again. But if you look at, you know, a flower just doesn't like, Oh, I'm going to shoot up today and just burst out. And you know, it, that takes time. It's a seed first mm. before that has to be planted, then it has to wait for the sun. Then it starts to come out of the seed and open up. And then even when it's up, it takes a while for the flower to come out trees they are they're the one of the longest living things on the planet and it takes them a long time to get to be you know if they're an oak tree 100 feet or you know again not knowing a ton about trees but how long they grow that why are humans any different we pretend we're not part of nature but nature just seems, means natural and i think natural includes slowing down that's good that's good so the last and final question is can you give the listeners, I know you told a story earlier, but could you give us like a sample, a blurb or something from one of your uh, stories and let them know where they can um, listen to more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, since you're a woman, I'm going to, I'm, I think. That <laughs> I am a woman. Thank you. <laughs> Want to double check. Um, no, I'm kidding, but. There's a story on, you know, my third storytelling album called The Five Faces of Mary. And um, some of the faces are, you know, to look like every other woman, have that perfect hair and keep at a certain weight. That's a face that she was taught. Another one is to be, you know, the, the drinking buddy for her husband and, and sexy when she needs him to be and always, you know, be, be the hot woman for her husband. That's a face she was taught. A third face is to be the mom. Like kids can wipe their hands on her. She got has to keep the, she's the, the pinball of the house. She's the one that knocks that ball around to make sure everything is in the right order. 
and make sure everything's going. And then um, that's a face. And a fourth face is um, to not be too powerful at work, you know, just kind of play these women's roles of, you know, um, ask for it, but you can't be too powerful like the guys. You don't want to make other women mad. And just, it's a lot of comparison, but there's, it's called five. Those are four faces I mentioned. That fifth face, if you tune into it, that's the one that hasn't been taught. And that's the most mm. uh, enlightening one. So, and I, I wrote that one for how many women I talked to Jackie that when, you know, if they're talking about stress management, wanted to actually have self-care and do things for themselves. And they tell me about all the things they have to do. And one of my favorite questions that's usually followed up by a chunk of silence, which means I got them, is <laughs> my question is like, how did all these roles get to be your responsibility? Mm. And they sit there and silence in my coaching, I always know means that they're in a place where they have to think about something different. Um, and I get it. You know, I, there's also stories about men in there too, in our roles too. So it's not just about, I know what's best for women. I don't, mm -hmm. but I do hear all of the ways that our society puts women in, in certain categories and places, and this is your role. And, um, I don't know how true that is anymore. So there's one very specific thing that they could be doing to really they don't have to get out of those roles, but there's a big one that they could jump into that'll expand their life. And how can they um, uh, get more of these stories and oh yeah, that connect it? Yeah, yeah, forget about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you go to uh, mikejamesnow.com, that's my website. Um, again, you could hear a few sample stories if if you want to just check out what they're about. Um, all three albums that I currently have are on there with some, some little bullet points of what some of the samples that will be inside that album, some of the things you can learn. And then each album just has a little button below. It says purchase. You click on there and it'll take you to Amazon and you can either get the old school physical CD uh, or you can get a digital copy as well. And you could also, if you type in the names of the albums on iTunes, which is kind of hard with Apple music now, you have to actually go into iTunes, but they're, they're out there as well. Well, thank you so much for agreeing and letting us get all in your business and <laughs> answering, uh, uh, answering the questions. You all make sure you connect to Mike. He's giving you his website. Make sure you go and purchase whatever he has to sell there and stay connected. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge. I've really enjoyed this interview. Thank you. And you all make sure you subscribe, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and, uh, and victory chat with Jackie McKeever podcast, because on victory chat with Jackie McKeever, your victory starts here. <laughs>